This video right here might be triggering to some of y'all Montreal Canadiens fans, and you know that I love your team. I love your prospects, I love your young guys, we talk about them all the time. These are some of my favorite young guys to cover on the channel. That sounds terrible, I should not have phrased it like that. But Montreal is my second favorite team. The Habs have had some terrible luck with injuries the past few years. However, today's video is not going to go over the injury bug per se. Today, what I wanted to do was talk about an article published on TVA Sports asking the question as to whether or not we should be worried about Nick Suzuki's start to the season. Now, this was published a few days ago. It was cited from the JIC show, and it is, of course, in French, so I had to translate it into English in order to understand what it is it's saying. And the funny part is, this article and everything that's talked about within it was published before the Canadians and the Capitals game the other night. So, before Suzuki had to assist there, before Caulfield got the overtime winner, etc., etc. Great game, by the way. Very entertaining for the fans. Suzuki, pretty good job in that game, too. But this article and everything in it is from before that period. But essentially, it's talking about Montreal Canadiens captain Nick Suzuki and whether or not his start to the year is worth being concerned about. Before we dive into the article, Nick Suzuki, 24 years old, 5'11", 205 pounds, right-handed guy, center, signed till the end of 2030, making 7.8 mil. He is the captain of the team. It's his second season as the captain, and at the time of the article's publication, he had one point in three games played. Now he's up at three points in four games because of the game against Washington. But even still, Nick Suzuki is part of a Montreal Canadiens team that you could say has had some good performances out of other guys. Cole Caulfield started out the season scoring brilliant highlight reel backhand goals. You had Kirby Doc looking like just a superstar stud when, of course, he was playing. He only lasted a few games this season, unfortunately. You had Yaroslavkovsky actually looking a lot better in this season's worth of play than you had ever seen him in last year's. And there are some pretty good things to look forward to, just in general when you talk about the guys who are on this team and the guys who are playing well. But for Nick Suzuki, things are a little bit different, and the article goes out there and says this at the very beginning. Let's start from a fundamental principle this evening. I love Nick Suzuki, the article writes. He's intelligent, he's creative offensively, responsible defensively, and Nick Suzuki recognizes opportunities on the ice, usually before the other players around him. This gives him an undeniable advantage, an advantage that more than compensates for his slower speed than several other number one centers in the NHL. Exactly, center number one. Some of you were concerned that Nick Suzuki didn't really belong in that category. I disagree with your fears. I don't share them for a single moment. Nick Suzuki is definitely not a generational player. He'll never be able to bend over to tie Connor Skates, whether he's Bedard or McDavid. Nick Suzuki is not Sidney Crosby either. But can he reasonably hope to have a career as successful as newly retired Patrice Bergeron? Without a shadow of a doubt, in my opinion. Bergeron had 39 points in 71 games in his rookie year, Suzuki had 41 in 71 games played, with the important nuance being that Nick played his first campaign at 20 and Patrice at 18. When he was 18 years old, Patrice Bergeron scored 73 points in 81 games, Suzuki went on to have the seasons that he did, and you could see that there is a similar point-per-game projection for Suzuki versus Patrice Bergeron. So interestingly enough, even though the article starts out by talking about, oh yeah, we should be worried about Suzuki's start to the year, however many points he gets, whatever, whatever, the article opens by talking about that Patrice Bergeron comparison, that in which we haven't talked about before. You know what's actually interesting? The one comparison that we have had with Nick Suzuki and a Boston Bruins guy was Brad Marchand. There were some comments made a few years ago by, I believe it was, was it Claude Julian? I'm not too sure, but he said that yeah, Suzuki's path reminds me of Marshan or whatever it was, and we made that video back when those comments were made. But now we're flipping the script and saying, yeah, no, Patrice Bergeron, maybe? Is that a more appropriate comparison here? Either way, the article on TVA Sports goes out there and says this. Back to tonight's topic, Nick Suzuki. I would be surprised if Nick Suzuki reached the 100-point marker better in the same season, despite the fact that the NHL is entering a more offensive era. 90 points at his best, in my opinion, is his case, but most likely with a positive differential. 
His average at the end of his career could very well be one point per game, or 80 or better over a period between now and the age of 30, but I insist with a positive plus-minus differential. And so, for y'all who are reading this with me, because I am technically just reading the article here, I feel comfortable doing that because it's in French, translated to English, so I'm not really copying and pasting what exactly it is word for word it says in the other language, but why is the article talking about Nick Suzuki's production? Why is it saying all this to supplement the idea of whether or not we should be worried about the guy? Oh, should we be worried? Oh, I don't know. He should be able to get 90 points in his prime. Like, that doesn't really make sense, right? So where exactly is the point of this article coming? Well, it comes after talking about what these writers think Suzuki could be. My point is this. Nick Suzuki is going to succeed because he has all the tools and he has a great head on his shoulders. But at the same time, the success of a hockey player rests, in addition to himself, on a set of factors beyond his control, but essential to meeting the hopes and statistical objectives placed in him. So, should we be worried about Nick Suzuki's start of the season? Absolutely not. Are his first three games a cause for concern? Certainly. Could this be explained, though? Quite. Josh Anderson and Cole Caulfield are not exactly defensive princesses. They don't do much to help the cause of the captain's pluses and minuses. On the other hand, the job of a good center player and a good leader is to find solutions and make their wingers better. Suzuki has what it takes to find the way. Above all, he has what it takes to lead the charge in a committee of center players who alone will not be much, but who, put together, will be dominant within a few years. A strength which, combined with increased maturity and talented defenders, will certainly lead the Canadians towards some very exciting springs. Springs, I guess they're referring to playoffs, it's translated right French to English. But essentially, the article concludes that even though Nick Suzuki has had a rough start to his season so far, 1.3 games minus 4, it's not really a reflection of his own play. It's more so a response to the environment around him and the players he is playing with, guys who aren't necessarily the most defensively polished, and as a result, it forces Suzuki to do a little bit more and have a bit more on his plate when it comes to defensive recovery and specialty. So, overall, I mean, the article has a pretty nice message that Nick Suzuki is going to be a fine NHL player and he's going to have these points and he's maybe going to max out at 90 points in a season. I definitely don't disagree with that. I don't think Suzuki is that same Connor McDavid, Jack Hughes, 110 plus point caliber guy, but we all know that Suzuki is great. It's just the start to the season so far has not been great, statistically speaking, even though you can understand that he is still a very smart player, he can snipe the puck when he is given room. Unfortunately, during the few times he has had the puck, he has not buried it in the back of the net like we know he can, even in the shootouts. Like, just the penalty shots this guy takes, the way he drags it on the backhand, he is such a smart player. But this season has not really been kind to him, statistically speaking, in regards to the goals and the on-ice metrics. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the way Montreal Canadiens captain Nick Suzuki has played this season, and whether or not you think his statistical profile is enough to garner concern? Are you concerned about Nick Suzuki? Because I know a lot of Canadians fans, y'all in the comments are probably going to say no, but the article that we are pulling from does exist, and of course, JIC does have a fan base that responds to and listens to what it is that they say, which is why I wanted to make this video commentary on that same topic here today. So thoughts in the comments. What do you feel about Nick Suzuki? What are your thoughts on the way that TVA projected his career? Do you think he's got a little bit of a higher ceiling than 90 points? Do you think he could be better than what Patrice Bergeron is at the NHL level? I mean, Bergeron was fantastic. I mean, arguably the best defensive forward ever to play the game, but uh, yeah, that's a pretty tall task to put on anybody who is 24 years old, but at the same time, I mean, Nick Suzuki is very good. So while I don't doubt that there probably is a Selkie nomination or two in his future one day, I doubt he'll ever reach the same highs of Patrice Bergeron where he's nominated every single year. Point production-wise, though, he maybe has a great shot at beating him out. Who really knows? So thoughts in the comment section below. Are you worried about Nick Suzuki? Do you think it's fair that we're talking about being worried by him? And do you think this season's worth of play is more of a reflection on him or the situation around him? Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this. Vrishash Rolls 99. And bye.